Okay, people. So listen, I wasn't the most comfortable with swimming when I was younger, right? I'm talking, I could not swim until much later than most people I knew. And I was terrified of the water. Not just that public pools can freak me out, but the thought of dipping down below the water at the beach could lead me to nightmares. Now, I don't know if it was something I picked up from watching too much Shark Week or what, but a classic move for me was just walking into my ankles and calling it getting in the water. Okay, there was no way I was going in any deeper than that. I know, I know, it was bad, and it drove my family crazy. Then, of course, the solution my family thought was swim class. It was the scariest few weeks of my life at the time. I never knew how much I could hate weekends, knowing that each Saturday I had to get into the water. But then something changed. I actually learned to swim. My family was praising the Lord, and I could swim pretty well. And the next summer, guess what? I loved it. I was looking for every excuse to go to the pool, hang out by the lake, or drive to the beach. I even started swim team, right? Now, something that I once hated because I didn't know how to do it became one of the most important things to me in life. My early fear of water seems like a strange way to transition into what we are gonna talk about today, but trust me, okay? Just listen, it fits. Because today, we're gonna talk about something that is often misunderstood but then we see it for what it really is. And when we do that, everything changes. Just like when I learned how to swim, everything changed for me about the water. When we learn about the whole story of Easter, everything just might change for you. Now, with Easter Sunday right around the corner, we are going to dive, get it, the water illustration, okay, we're gonna dive into what you might say is the most important holiday for Jesus followers. But this isn't just about chocolate bunnies or even where we usually end the Easter story. If you've heard of Easter before, you may know Easter is all about the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. That he managed to die and then he managed to come back to life. That's what we celebrate at Easter. But a lot of times when we hear Easter, we think about what it means for us and what happens after death for us. Because of Easter, we can be sure about heaven and spending eternity with Jesus. And that's true. But what we're going to discover is that Easter is about so much more than what happens after we die. Easter is about life after this incredible encounter with a risen Jesus. And that's what we're talking about, life after the resurrection, after life. And for the next couple of weeks, we're gonna look at three people who knew Jesus before he died and then encountered him after he came back to life and what their lives look like afterward. We're gonna talk about their afterlife because the Easter story was never meant to stop at the resurrection. The story was meant to keep going all the way until today. And if that's true, then what if we were meant to be a part of this story, of this life after the resurrection? What does the afterlife look like for us? Now, for some of you, that might sound interesting. To others of you, that sounds terrible. You don't want to be part of that story because of what you think God is like. Now, depending on how you've been raised or what you've been taught or even because of some Christians you may have met or encountered online, God might seem like the last person you wanna get excited about because from your experience, he doesn't seem like he is for you. He feels like less of a friend and more of an authoritative and angry dictator. Now, for others of us, we have the idea that if God is out there, then maybe he's annoyed with us because of our constant poor choices or bad decision. Maybe he expects us to be perfect and he doesn't even celebrate the good decisions that we make. Or we think that God is angry because we've messed up and he'll be sure we get the punishment we deserve. Or maybe we think that he's a perfectionist. So no matter how hard we try, we'll never meet his standards. Maybe some of you think that he's absent, like you believe he's there, but he doesn't really care about your day-to-day -day life. Or maybe we think, you know, he's irrelevant, like he's some ancient God and ancient gods aren't all that helpful with today's actual problems. If you have ever felt any of those things about God, you're not alone. I have felt that way before, and I bet the room is full of people who have felt some of those things as well. When we're being honest, at one point or another, we've all had one or more of these thoughts about God. So here's the question. What do we do with that? How do those thoughts about God fit in with this big celebration that we call Easter? Something sounds and feels off. Is the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus just something meant to make us feel good for a moment until we remember what we think God is really like? Easter is all about good news, but the good news doesn't seem so good when God doesn't seem great, does it? 
See, you may have heard the story of Jesus dying and coming back to life, what we call the resurrection. But before we just talk about the events of the resurrection story itself, let's focus on what it tells us about God. Because I think looking at the first Easter does more than just give us the basis for the Christian faith. I think it gives us a look at what God is really like. And that is just as big of a deal as the events themselves. So we're gonna look at a passage of scripture written by a guy named John. And John was one of the 12 guys who followed Jesus really closely. And most scholars think that John was the youngest of the disciples, a teenager when he started following him. And then he ended up outliving all of the other disciples. In fact, where all the other disciples were eventually killed for their faith in Jesus, they think that John was the only one who ended up living a long life and dying of old age. So in other words, he was the fortunate one of the group, right? In a way, I think that gives John an interesting perspective that the other disciples didn't have. He had an entire lifetime to think back on the few years he spent following Jesus, thinking about what he heard and then putting it all into practice for the rest of his long life. And he could play the long game with his faith and see what a belief and a trust in Jesus looked like when it was played out for a lot of decades. And so when we read what John wrote, we know he's writing from a place of having an entire life, of remembering back on what he saw and what he heard and what he lived firsthand. Over the course of his life, John wrote three letters and one gospel. A gospel is one of the books that talks about Jesus' life on earth. And in those writings, he tells us what he's learned about God. And it's in the first of these letters, John gives us a really helpful understanding of what the resurrection proved about what God is like. So check out what he wrote. God is love. This is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only son into the world that we might live through him. This is love, not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. And maybe you've heard that God loves you. Maybe you've heard that before, but maybe it's never felt like it was true. But John, who spent years with Jesus as a teenager and then spent the rest of his life following Jesus' teaching, was able to look back at everything he had experienced and everything he heard and say without question, God sent Jesus so that we, so that you and I would know exactly how much he loves us. He had one objective, to show us what love looks like. It looks like Jesus. God's motivation for sending Jesus was showing you and I love. But even that isn't the whole story. Jesus went as far as dying to show us just what kind of love he has for all of us. If we ever wonder, you know, if our mistakes are too big, if our missteps are too many, all we need to do is look to what Jesus did with us in mind. And remember, nothing we can do can cancel what Jesus did for us. Because of Jesus, we know that love is greater. Every time, love is greater. And here's the thing. This story, it meant a lot to John, who taught us about this kind of love. See, John was a friend, but when he watched Jesus die on a cross, John probably thought that friendship and all that came with it was over. If you've ever lost a friendship in some way, you may know how John felt, probably hopeless, alone, frustrated, but then everything changed three days later when Jesus pulled off the greatest comeback of all time. Jesus straight up came back to life. And so the resurrection of Jesus proves what God is really like. What does that mean? God is love. And love, my friends, is stronger than death. I mean, just think about this in strictly human terms. Look, if you had a friend who willingly gave up their life so that you could live, what would you think that friend thought of you? Would they think that you're weak, that you're just a screw up, that you weren't worth their time? Of course not. I mean, this sounds ridiculous when you put it this way, but the only thing it would prove is that that friend seriously, seriously loves you. In other words, because of the resurrection, John knew he was loved. Because of the resurrection, John knew that he was loved. And that wasn't all. John actually then knew something else because of the resurrection. John knew that God is love. And the same is true for you and I. Whatever you've thought about God up until now, all you need to know moving forward is that because of the resurrection and what Jesus did for us, for you and I, we know, we can know that we are loved. If you and I just took one thing into the rest of our lives this Easter, my hope is that it would be this, that once and for all, we would grab a hold of the idea that God loves us and God likes us deeply. The death and resurrection of Jesus, they prove it. 
Regardless of the ideas you have about God, when we started talking today, I think we could all learn something from what John has told us. So as you head out this week, I wanna invite you to take two steps as you consider life after this Easter season. Two steps that can help you in your way start seeing God as love. Number one, be honest about your ideas of what God is like. We are living in a culture where everybody has an opinion about what God's like, and it can feel impossible for those opinions to not affect us. Okay, that's natural and normal for everybody. But I wanna challenge you to be honest with yourself first. Maybe even take a few minutes this week and write down what you really, really believe about God. Don't give the churchy answer. Don't give the answer that your grandma would like to see. Be real. Don't worry, okay? God can handle it. You're not gonna offend him. We all have ideas about Jesus, right or wrong, but learning to name them will help us figure out whether it's the right idea or the wrong idea. This is your permission slip, to be honest, okay? That's number one. Number two, process what God's love means for you personally. Like, what does it mean for you that God loves you? How does this knowledge impact how you see yourself? Turn on a timer for like, let's say 15 minutes. Sit down, put your phone on airplane mode or even turn it off and think. Write it out, shout it out, have a dance party, okay? Do whatever you need to do to just take a moment and stop and hear your own thoughts when it comes to God. No other voices, no social media noise, no Netflix in the background, all right? Now, I realize that for some of you, this sounds horrible. I'm not gonna completely disagree with you on that. But going through this process, you know what it will do for you? It will get you to a place where you can maybe start having some difficult conversations with your family. It will allow you to ask some challenging questions in a small group, or even to wrestle with God himself over hurts you've had, or things that you've felt or experienced in the church. Listen, because of the resurrection, John knew that God is love. And because of the resurrection, you, you and I, we can know the same thing. We can be sure, absolutely sure that God is love. Jesus' life and death and resurrection, they prove it. And the life we live after understanding that and believing that can be totally different as a result. So what if you took a step? What if you took a step toward grasping who God really is and letting that change you? What if you really believe that he loved you right now without performance, without your perfection? What if you really let his love affect you personally? Maybe you'd begin to experience the kind of relationship with God that your friends talk about, but you've never really understood or felt yourself. Maybe you'll actually start to experience the relationship you talk about, but have never seen. Maybe you would feel less numb about this whole God thing altogether. Whatever it is, I can tell you from experience, it is worth a try. It's worth a try. The same way that everything changed for me when I learned how to swim. Everything changed for me when I learned that because of the resurrection, I know with confidence that I am deeply, deeply loved by God. So this week, when you're with your small group, here's what I want you to think about, okay? What would you want to change in you? If you really let God's love get a hold of you, would you change your worship experience? Do you have more peace, more confidence? Would you be more bold to believe that God is who he says he is? Or is it something else entirely? I would love for you to talk about it. But we can know, you and I, we can know that God loves us because of what Jesus did for us on the cross. Because of the resurrection, John knew that God is love. And you and I, my friends, can know it as well.